You know, uh, I, I do love talking about railroad, and, and you know, my entire life has been spent in freight world, so transit's new to me. But um, you know, to kind of give you an idea how far things have come. When I graduated from school, I worked up. Uh, I worked as, as in the railroad industry for a government agency where we switched. Uh, it was a uh, an ammunition depot, so we hauled bombs around. <laughs> So you never wanted to derail or have a bad mistake there because it was the bad news. But when I graduated, my father-in-law, he comes up to me and says, he says, where are you going to work? I said, well, I'm going to work for Missouri Pacific Railroad. He, says, he shook his head and said, couldn't you get a better job than that? You know? <laughs> so he, that was right at the time when Staggers Act and uh, they were deregulating the railroad. It was, the railroads were in pretty tough shape, you all remember. A lot of you guys don't remember. You read it in history books. but. Um, you know, the freight railroad had to get really efficient. And, you know, you, you look at the history of railroading, where it's, where it's begun. For those of you that have aspirations to be in the railroad industry, um, you know, I'm going to give you a little perspective of what, what I think makes a successful transportation manager. And I think it transcends whether it's uh, freight or whether it's uh, uh, transit. Um, one thing about it, you need to be prepared to move. You know, I have moved in my career, I think I'm on number 18. So I have lived everywhere you can imagine, from Canada to all over the South, the West, the Midwest. So I've been exposed to a lot of different types of railroad. Um, you know, I've, I've managed, this will be kind of the, the culmination of, you know, from intermodal facilities to mainline work to pump yards to automobile networks, the chemical networks, you know, I've seen a little bit of everything. And if you want to be successful, one thing I learned early on, you need to be a good practitioner of safety. Understand what drives safe performance. And uh, if I credit anything uh, about my USC degree, uh, my master's was in systems management. And, you know, I've seen a lot of bad accidents in my career. It makes an impact on you. Um, when you have a train crew member or somebody who works for you that uh, is killed or seriously hurt, um, it makes an impact on you. So the one thing early on in my career, I wanted to become a good practitioner of leading people safely. And I became a student of how you do that. You know, a lot of people think safety is just, people don't understand what safety is. If I ask this group, what's safety? They don't tell me, what is it? What's safety? We talk about it all the time. Sure. Yeah. Taking all measures to prevent injuries and death. Well, that could be describing the events, but what is safety? I think it's adherence to operating discipline. That's what it looks like. See, we want to describe what it looks like. And what safety is, is how you manage risk. Risk and probability. And you're never going to eliminate all the risk in the workplace. It's almost impossible. So how do you safeguard against risk? But I'll never forget, I walked into, uh, I took a class on safety at USC. And, you know, here, here I was, I was managing everything from Yermo, California, the whole LA Basin. Um, and there's nothing like railroading in LA. It is, it's an open sport. I mean, it is, you know, just the amount of 12 million people in this area, the number of grade crossings, the number of things that are out there, um, it's amazing what happens. So I went into the, to the, uh, course that night, the professor was a guy named Ted Ferry. I don't know if he's still alive, but he was uh, one of the leaders in his field in safety. And he, and he looked at us and he says, you know, he said, um, everything that happens in safety is your fault as a manager. And I thought, I don't know if I'd buy that. You know, that's a really hard thing to accept. But if you're going to be in this business, you got to take that attitude. You got to take it personal. You have to look at 
every aspect as a manager, what you control. You know, you get to hire people, you get to incentivize people, you get to, you get to set what's important. And it takes a, hard, a lot of hard work to provide a safe operation. And when I came here and I looked at the history of Chatsworth and the carnage that came out of that accident, that was the epicenter, I think, of what changed the railroad industry. Not just in transit, but it changed fundamentally the entire railroad industry. Look at all the things that have been driven from that. ETC regulation, we've got the inward facing cameras. If you've been reading the walls of the uh, LA Times the last couple of days, you've seen, you've seen the articles about that. Um, crash energy management of cars. You know, go on and on and on about what happened from that one event. Now, the thing that I keep telling everyone, you can have the greatest technology, you can have crash energy made for cars, but you still gotta have operators that operate those trains the right way. And so if you're gonna once again go back to what makes it how's it successful in this business, how do you manage your employees to want to work safe? to do the right things, uh, to really care about the public. And of course, when I came here and I started to uh, look at what I thought the issues are, we gotta remember the passenger. I think sometimes we, we, we think about our train schedules, or we think about our capital improvements, or what we're building, or, you know, running that railroad. But what's different between freight and passenger is you're hauling people. And that's that is, is the ultimate responsibility in my opinion. Uh, you know I have a conference call every morning and we talk about train operations and performance and, and uh, so one morning I got on the call and of course, half my guys, they never know what I'm going to bring up anyways because I tend to want to keep things lively and talk about a lot of different areas. But uh, I said, just hold on a minute. Just hold the phone. Don't put it on mute. Just sit still for a minute. Watch out. And I sat for three minutes. Never said a word. And it was dead silence on the call. So they didn't know if I'd gone to the bathroom or you know, where I'd gone, I thought Fenton's lost his mind, he's only been here a few days. But you know, my point was, I wanted to feel what it was like to have a delay and be wondering what the heck's going on. Because how bad is it for a passenger to sit on that train and it's delayed and nobody tells him what's going on? Not acceptable. So, you know, we've been focusing on the passenger. We've been focusing on what's right for the passenger. And so we've been working really hard on safety. We have been working hard on train performance. We've, we've moved our train performance up, I think, almost three percentage points in the last you know, two to three weeks. And, you know, I told them, uh, we were starting, I think when I came in, I looked at some of our on-time performance, and uh, I think the worst perform the worst performing line, I don't think, I know, the worst performing line we had was the Antelope Valley line. And I think it was around 89%. And I said, you know, I ran general boxcar freight trains better than this. <laughs> and I said, you know, here I'm running boxcar business at 97, and you guys are at 89%. And I said, not going to happen. And it takes a lot of hard work to detail 